everybody, Stacey M. Gooden here again, and thanks for joining How to Grow Your Brand. In this particular lecture, we're going to be talking about how to build a website. We're just going to be going over the basics because I know when it comes to building a website, it can be very confusing. There's so many different routes you can take. I know my head was spinning seven years ago when I started WeatherAngerMama.com. But I knew I wanted to start a parenting blog. I had a starting point. And over the years, it's evolved in so many ways. And I still get asked those questions, how to go about beginning. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics, coming up with a tagline, a title for the website, among other things to include hosting and things like that, domains. <laughs> I know it's a lot, but we will get through it. The most important thing is having a great starting point. I'm also gonna add some of the essentials you'll need for your website to make sure it gets the traffic it deserves. So, hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to my personal guide to creating a website. Now whether you already have a website or maybe you're thinking of starting a website not quite sure how to go about getting it accomplished, I'm here to share a few tips with you uh, and we're going to break it all down into about six steps. And before we really delve into everything, I just wanted to go over a few just key terms, definitions if you will. A website. Now that can be a combination of landing pages, sales pages, blog posts, static articles, and promotional pages. Now all of these things are pretty self-explanatory. However, I wanted to speak specifically about what first off a landing page is and we're going to get into a, what a blog is and a blog post. Now landing pages, it offers up information about a company usually has information about products or service that that company offers, as well as a call to action. Now here is an example of what a landing page looks like. Now I'm not affiliated with this company, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. It's usually a static page, it doesn't change from day to day. Normally landing pages are pretty much set in stone, I mean sometimes it may get changed after like a year or six months or whenever an offer is up or something like that. But notice at the bottom here, it has a learn more. So you can click on that and learn more about whatever is being offered. And at the top, it does offer a template as well as a 30 day trial or something that they're offering. And then it just gives some information about what the company is about and what it's offering. On the other hand, a blog, offers up information that changes on a consistent basis. Blogs include what is called blog posts. I know some people get the two confused. They'll say, hey, I'm gonna go write a blog. <laughs> a blog is the actual site. Like my blog is weatheranchormama.com. And if I am writing a blog post, that's pretty much an article that I'm writing for that day. And usually that post is written in more like a conversational tone. It's very informal. Um, now blog posts or blogs offers up entries that includes tags, categories, images, and video. So you get my drift. Blog is actual, the actual site. Blog posts are entries that includes tags, it includes categories, it includes images, it's all under that blog umbrella, if you will. And a blog post, and a blog for that matter, it changes pretty much day to day. You're writing in it consistently. So it could be twice a week, twice a month, twice a day, whereas a landing page is usually like set in stone, it's more static, right? Now going into my first tip, Right. If you are ready to start your blog or build your website, you're not quite sure how to about, go about doing it, here are some tips to keep in mind. Now, before you even get started, I want you to write down your goals for your website. Your goals should include what you want to get from it and what you want others to get from it. So when I first started my blog, for instance, I was a new mom, 
I wanted to share my journey being a mom, being a career mother. And so I started off with just pictures and just a quick little blurb about what the day was like, sharing photos. I mean, I would always get questions from fans and my family members, as well as my, my friends, wanting to see pictures. So this was like the obvious thing to do, to kind of kill all birds with one stone. So not to leave anybody out, I can always say, hey, you know, I started a website. It's a blog, weatheranchormama.com. I'll be posting pictures consistently. You could go and check it out. And that's kind of how it all got started. However, over the course of the years and the months that went by, I started to realize, you know what? I want to be able to offer more than just like cute baby photos. I want people to get something out of it. So that's when I began sharing my personal tips on breastfeeding, challenges of breastfeeding, cradle cap, how to fix it. Also, other different tips like organizing children's toys, whatever the case is. You want people to get something out of it. I want people to know that they can come to my site and there's a takeaway. They can learn something that will make their lives better. So think about those things. Now, number two, when you got all of that down, you write down your goals, it's time to choose a name for your website. Now, I know this could be a little difficult. I know for me, it was a little tricky in the beginning, but it was pretty clear because my site was basically about me being a new mom, having a career. So Weather Anchor was my title at the time. And I figured, okay, I'll do Weather Anchor. And Mama seems like the obvious choice because now I'm a new mom. And it just had a nice ring to it. So I ran with it. And then when it came to choosing a tagline, that was a little bit more tricky. Now, I just want to also add one thing. When it comes to choosing your blog title or your website, the name of your website, Think of it as like a marriage. I mean, you can get out of it, but it's a little tough to get out of it sometimes, you know? So think of it along those lines. Think about choosing something that you don't mind me being married to for the long haul. Because if you were to ever want to go back and change the name of your website, that means changing your domain name. That means going through all this red tape. And it's a little bit of a hassle. But when it comes to changing your tagline, a little bit easier. You know, you may have to go through a rebranding process, but you're not like losing your audience. Whereas choosing a different blog name or blog title or domain name after a while, you run the risk of doing that, losing your audience. So keep that in mind. Write down some ideas. Just look at other sites. Get some ideas. Get some tips from friends and family if you're a little confused, because I know it can be. Once you've chosen a name for your website and a tagline, purchase your domain name and your hosting. Now here are just a few ideas. What I basically went through, I contacted some of my blogger friends just to kind of get an idea of what space they were using, where they got their domain and their hosting. And these are just a few examples. There are tons. So be sure to do your research. But GoDaddy, very popular. Bluehost, Gate, HostGator, Rackspace, DreamHost, Servicely, Namecheap. These are all just examples. Now, I would suggest that when it comes to choosing your domain and your hosting, really think about it. Let me give you an example. When I first started my site, I had no idea what I was doing. So I went under the Google platform because I knew it was, it was free. It didn't cost me anything. I wasn't looking to make this a business at the time. It was more along the lines of it's a hobby. If your website is a hobby, you just want to do something for fun is one thing. But if you're looking to make this a business and you're serious about having a website and blogging and being able to connect with your audience, you definitely want to own your own space. Now, the mistake that I made was that 
I started off on a free platform. And then I realized one day like, hey, you can make money from this. You can supplement your income. I can work with brands and continue to brand myself. And then I w- went through the hassle of pretty much changing over, which took a lot of time, energy, money, and it was just a huge hassle. So just think about your intentions. If this is just like a fun hobby, you just want to share pictures, it's light and fluffy, you're not that serious about it, fine, you go on a free platform. But if you are serious about making this your business and branding yourself, then it's a good idea to invest the time and the money off the bat because it saves you all of that trouble in the long run. Now, GoDaddy does offer hosting and to host your site and your domain. And a lot of these companies, they do that. But it is possible you can have your domain with one company and then have your hosting somewhere else. That is a choice you make. That's an option. I've done both. I've had everything under one umbrella, my domain and my hosting, and I also tried it separately. I personally liked having everything under one umbrella, but definitely do your research, comparison shop, that's important, and see what works for you. Now, when it comes to choosing a domain and a hosting, that's one thing. When you get that squared away, you have your ducks in a row, You want to make sure you choose a content management system that also works for you. And here are a few examples. WordPress, of course, everybody knows WordPress. It's top dog. But there's also TypePad, Weebly, Blogger, Wix, Tumblr, Squarespace, and Ghost. Now, I've blogged on TypePad before at my other stations that I worked for. In the beginning, having a blog was very important, and I remember we used TypePad at the time. Wasn't a huge fan of it. It's very similar to WordPress. It's pretty easy to use, but not something that I would choose, per se. There's also Weebly and Wix. Both kind of have like that drop, drag and drop. It's kind of simple to use as well. Blogger is where I began because it was free. It was very user-friendly. I had absolutely no problems. It was owned by Google, so I really didn't have any issues with hacking or any of those problems. But the main problem that I did have was that I didn't own my space. So Google pretty much owned my content. If they wanted to take something down or change something, by law, they were able to do that. And I would have like nothing to say. And I felt... I felt stifled, even though it was a user-friendly, popular platform. I got a lot of traffic from Google uh, through Blogger. But in the, the long term, I didn't see it being advantageous because if I wanted to work with brands, I felt like I had to be extra careful because I didn't want to violate some kind of hidden terms and services that I wasn't familiar with. So I went through the hassle of then transitioning to WordPress. And as I mentioned, that was a real doozy. It was, it was very complicated and it was a huge hassle and it did cost me in the long run. WordPress is, as I mentioned, top dog. It does reign supreme. Most people use it. Most companies are WordPress compatible. It does use a plugin system, which can be tricky. There is a learning curve, but if you take the time to learn it, you'll find that you'll fall in love with it. So just consider it. Again, it's great to read up on the different choices that you have. Tumblr is also very popular, but like it's kind of like Google, the whole blogger thing. Uh, there's also Ghost and Squarespace. So go through all of them. They have these cool Facebook groups that people are willing to share what they know and what they've used. So that's always a good option for you as well. Number five, make sure, this is so important, 
I should have bolded this. <laughs> Make sure your website is mobile responsive. Now, according to Smart Insights, 80%, at least 80% of internet users own a smartphone. And that percentage is just going to continue to go up and up and up. Now, when you decide to start your website, or if you have a website already, it's a good idea to put your site through a mobile test. There's testing sites that will check the responsiveness of your site to see if it's mobile friendly. And you definitely want to do that because most people these days, they're surfing the web on their phones. They are buying things on their phones. They're reading articles on their phones. They're checking the weather on their phones. You get my drift. So it's not hard to do. I think now it's kind of elementary when you start a website. But for me, when I started my site, it was about checking a box to see whether or not I wanted it to be mobile responsive. And it's important to check that box. Uh, but nine out of 10 times, if you are going to pay somebody to help you or if you're doing it yourself, I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But you just want to be mindful of that just to play it safe. Now, once you have all of that under your belt, you just want to make sure your website includes a few things. Now, when you're designing, what, when you're writing your posts, you want to make sure they're photos and make sure your photos are, you have the proper tags. You want to name them. You want to give them a title and what we call an alt tag so that it's searchable. So for instance, my daughter and I, we do curly hairstyles. So you want to make sure that you name that photo, curly hairstyle, braided hairstyle, whatever you think people will search for, you name it that title. And it usually should match whatever the name of the post is. And then once you do that, make sure it has that alt tag because that's what people will see when they do search, when you name that photo. And that way, when people are searching images, it doesn't just show up on, it doesn't just show up on the blog post per se, it also shows up when you're searching Google images, for example. Your website should also include videos. Now, videos now are like number one these days. When you are on, let's say, Facebook, think of Facebook, Snapchat, now Instagram. It's all video driven. So when it comes to sharing your content through these social media platforms, a lot more eyes are going to be on your site, more so than just static images. So just keep that in mind when you do uh, have your website or when you're designing it. You want to make sure that you do include videos. And I do know that everybody is comfortable in front of the camera. Now, that's what I do for a living, but it doesn't mean that I always want to be on camera. But if you're not comfortable, for instance, get somebody who is. You know, if you have a friend or if you have a business partner who doesn't mind doing the videos and shooting the videos, Definitely take advantage of that because video these days are going to reign supreme and will continue to do so. You should also have a work with me page. It's pretty self-explanatory if you're looking to work with brands, if you're just looking to build relationships with people, you want people to know how to work with you. And it's interesting because when I started in my line of work many years ago, I've been doing this, oh my gosh, well over 10 years. And when I started my site, I had so many people contact me through my contact page for speaking engagements and appearances and different appearances, magazine shoots and things like that. So definitely have a work with me page and you do want to have information on what you're available for. If you're a consultant, you want to put some information on the kind of services you offer. If you are a public speaker, you want to have information on that. If you want to work with brands to help promote their business and their 
their products and services, you also want to include that. And if you're a travel blogger looking to do some travel posts, you definitely want to include that as well. Or even product reviews, things like that. And of course, your work with me and your contact info does go hand in hand. You want to include that as well. Social media links are super duper important because it's great to build your email list, you know, and have a sign up form so that you have a list of everyone who comes to your site and who is reading your content. But it's also as important, I'd say, to have social media links linking to, let's say, your Twitter, Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, just to continue to build those relationships outside of your blog. That's always a good idea because that is important when you are looking to work with brands. They sometimes they want to know how many followers you have or they just want to look at your other social media platforms to see how well engaged you are with your particular community. So that's why having those social media links are important. Now, you also want to add the products and services you offer. That's where that landing page will come in handy. If you have a landing page that has all the information about your products and services, prices and whatnot, you definitely want to add that. Sign up form, I think this should be absolutely number one. Why? Because that is how you stay in touch with your readers, with your audience. Social media links are important, but building an email list is just as important, if not more important, because let's just say, for instance, Facebook decides to, to just phase out, kind of like MySpace, kind of like phased out. Whoever you had following you may also get lost in the shuffle, may also be phased out. But if you have a sign-up form where people can log in and put in their emails, you always have a connection to that person. So if you are offering anything, if you are writing a new blog post for the day, you have a way of getting that information out to your subscribers. So I just want to include a few of my pages just so that you can get an idea of what it is I'm talking about to kind of bring this all home here. So I am big on video. I think video these days reigns supreme. Whether you are on Snapchat, now Instagram has live streaming where you can post like you can post videos and also go live. There is also Facebook Live. There's so many different platforms now that offer it including of course YouTube that for me it's important to connect with my audience that way. I decided to add a YouTube banner so that if folks wanted to check me out on YouTube, check out my family, we do fun videos, my daughter does a lot of crafts, science projects, things like that. We do curly hairstyles. So the audience sees it right there at the top of the page. And as I mentioned, having a domain name, the domain name in this case matches the title of my blog in addition to having a tagline. And as I mentioned before, a tagline can be changed. I went through a rebranding. I started off as Weather Anchor Mama, Balancing Career and Motherhood. But over the years, my children, they've gotten bigger. And my career path has somewhat changed. I still do the weather, more on a freelance basis, but my core mission or my core position is raising children to weather the storm. So I share a lot of parenting tips. I share information about my multiracial, multicultural family, teaching my kids about their identity. And under that umbrella, I have different little things that folks can learn about me. So there is that healthy eating, beauty, journalism, and among other things that folks can get when they come onto the site. And as I mentioned, we do fun hair tutorials and this is just to reinforce the importance of video. So we do a video and then we'll have uh, a blog post to go around it to kind of tie it all in and bring it home. 
And as I mentioned, social media icons are as important. Now, if you look here, this is where viewers or my audience can share my content. So it's important to be able to have those icons there so that people can share your content. That's how you grow your audience. That's also how you build a base and grow your traffic. Because the more people share, the more eyes are on your site. And it's also important to have that pick. You want to have your bio, if I didn't mention that. <laughs> It's important to have a bio with just a little information about you. You want to have that linking to your about page. That's just an idea. And then my social media links are actually in two places. It was actually on the previous page, but it's also down here so that as folks read on, they can get those links again. Like, hey, you want to follow her on Pinterest? Let's see what her Pinterest is. Let's see what her Instagram is. So that pretty much concludes my guide to starting a website. I hope you find this very informative. And if there's anything I didn't cover, or if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me directly at stacyann at weatherankamama.com. And you can also connect with me on social media, my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm also on Periscope. So be sure to uh, connect with me. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching my personal guide to starting a website. See you in the next video. Bye.